Headbangers. Welcome back to Headbangers Podcast. I'm here with Nathan today. Join us, Cytotoxin. Well, I got to say, you guys released uh, a killer record in 2020. Definitely one of the yeah. best Marlow records of the year. So, like, Thank you. I mean, the impression that I got from it, like, it's very technical, but it's got so much melody as well. Like, was that the approach that you guys were going for with this one? Yeah, yeah, that's what we wanted to do. Um, yeah, I think this time we were, were more open to new ideas or different ideas. We experimented way more with different tempo or like different scales and whatever. And it turned out pretty cool. So I think during the Gamageddon times, we wanted to push a lot to play faster than the usual stuff. But this time it was more relaxed and I think it turned out cool. Mm. It, was, it, it, it was awesome. It, it, was, it was probably one of the best like tech death albums that I listened to like last year. Um, I wondered like what was like the biggest influence kind of going in to like writing the album? Like what were we kind of listening to at the time where you're like, hmm, this might actually work well for us? I think um, just personally speaking, so I, I listened to a lot of Shadow of Intent. Um, oh, they were awesome. I, I like their like symphonic um, approach and mm. how they fuse brutal music with melody and symphonic mm. stuff. I think this was an influence for sure, but I think what inspired me also was one of our songs from Gamageddon, the Chernopolis song, a song that we mm. really enjoyed to play live and I think this this was for me like something or a direction I wanted to push even more. Mm. So um, yeah, but there yeah. are a lot of different styles. I think one main thing about Cytotoxin is that we listen to a lot of non-metal music. Mm. And mm -hmm. I think that sometimes this shows in our music. I don't know, mm. what, what does Ponzo, Ponzo think about this? Does we, we lost Ponzo? Oh no! He's gone. Oh no. Lost I, the brother. <laughs> you can't hear me anymore? We oh, okay. Oh, okay, you know. okay. I'm just turning my volume on the microphone down because sometimes someone is uh, doing some noise in my room <laughs> and I don't want you people to hear. So yeah, I listen to uh, not only metal, I listen to a lot of different bands like uh, Toto, for example. You know, total, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I guess uh, Nuclear Earth, the title track, is influenced by Africa. No way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> no, not really, but, uh, it would be nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just as Jason said, I totally agree. Um, we have like a very wide uh, taste in music, not only mm. in metal and yeah. Like the, the main uh, uh, metal bands that I am influenced uh, by is uh, probably uh, Dying Fetus, Beneath the Massacre, you know, all the all the classic uh, death metal, bands. technical yeah. bands, and uh, Necrophages, of course. Yes, that's where my inspiration comes from. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, but I have to agree. I think um, <laughs> Chernobylis, um, uh, I also enjoy to perform and to, to play the song on stage. And I think it was a good starting point from um, making a new album and to keep on having this tone in our music. And um, in, in my, in my uh, personal um, uh, point of view, it's nothing like we have a band, we want to, want to sound like a band. Mm. For me, it was like dealing with the topic. And yeah. it's it's getting more it's getting worse and more dystopic, so it's mm. it just seems to be logic, to logical to to keep this tone, and um, but I think what what I really what was impressing me was the latest Cattle Decapitation record because oh, that was it, so good. it, it yeah. has this, this serious dark uh, end time tone mm -hmm. and. I remember we were sitting in the studio, the, the songs were finished, but uh, we were listening to that uh, album and really enjoying that. And I was um, playing guitar and showing Jason uh, how to play it, and I remember that. As always. Um, <laughs> as always. Um, but um, to, to, to say something about my influences, I would also say that Beneath the Massacre and Aborted were my main influences on, um, mm -hmm. in ter terms of uh, the vocal styles and performing on stage 
so I would say that what uh, it, it's my main influence is in um, in making brutal vocals and death metal yes. vocals. Certainly. Yes. I've got to ask. Uh, I just want to add uh, that uh, you can probably hear a lot of uh, aborted in one of our songs, which is called Urine Pref. It's like mm. we, had, we did a tour with them together in, help me guys, was it 2018? Yeah, 18. It's yeah, and you can clearly hear some influence from them too. I yeah. can hear that. Yeah. I got to say as well, um, where did the fascination with like nuclear war come from? Like, are you guys big Fallout fans or do you just think, yeah, I'll like to make songs about nukes someday? <laughs> Where did it all come from? <laughs> what's what's the origin? Um, yeah, that's that's maybe the, the question we we got uh, to answer a lot. Um, <laughs> I have not that answer for this. I remember back in the days we were sitting in the rehearsal room and we realized, okay, if we do that music, it will be quite technical and fast and brutal. So we realized that topic would fit pretty cool. So we located in East Germany. Maybe that's the link. So we got uh, our, our basis is also came, comes from um, Eastern Europe, but um, I think it, 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 um, the, the topic itself it fits the music, and we got yeah, some, some some ideas with all the barrels and all the radiation signs and the samples and all the stuff. So um, that for, for us it was really cool to combine it, like the visual concept with the music itself. Um, so and um, if you if you talk about nuclear earth latest record, you can realize the topic is not over. It's still ongoing, like the, mm. the, the forest fires in, in Chernobyl last year, Fukushima incident, all the stuff, and it's it's still happening and it's still um, yeah you can still um, yeah can concentrate on that and uh, keeping the 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 topic up. Absolutely. That's 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 really interesting. To be fair, um, I, w I was just wondering, like, obviously in this this album, like, we we kind of like briefed on it in one of a previous question that like, it's like you've got more melody as well. Is that like something that you're gonna go for more, like, a, a more influence with melody, um, as well as with the heavier side? Or is it is it gonna keep expanding in the future? Jason is to blame for the melodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends. So we are we are open for new influences always, and we can't really tell in which direction our music will go. Um, for sure, it will always be brutal and technical, but um, I think the the latest album showed that we can do whatever we want and yeah. feel free to whatever we want to do, and that's that's pretty cool. And it's awesome to have this this kind of freedom and. It's it's cool to experiment with lower tempo, but we also enjoy the higher tempo piece. So, um, mm. like, who knows what will happen? But for sure, it will always be cytotoxin. It will be always radioactive, and mm. yeah, whatever pushes us. I don't know, Fonzo, what do you think? I mean, it this sounds so simple, but we are just trying to write good songs, you know. And they can be slow, they can be fast. It's just about hitting someone in the face with notes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, the, the album definitely does that. It, it yeah. is literally like a, it's, it is a hit in the face. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, this is amazing! Yeah. Like, there's like there's there's so many songs where I was like, wow, like it just it was so like brutal. But then like the melody kind of creeps up, and you're like, wow, there's there's so many elements bouncing off of each other, and I think you it you you all did a really good like job with making that like possible where it was like all flowed and it felt like it was still like cytotoxin it fit with the the act if anything the melodies also complemented the brutal sections uh for me yeah i agree because i think sometimes with a lot of tech deck bands sometimes when they do like really technical stuff they kind of lose the melody a bit and you know it kind of gets a bit jumbled all together but with you guys you managed to maintain the melody and the technicality in such a perfect balance thank you yeah I, I see what you mean. Uh, I think a lot of bands are just playing technical to be technical, and that's not nothing that we ever wanted. We have we have songs like "Ready Edis Generis," which is the first song on the Gamma Gamma, not the one before uh, Nuclear Earth. And this is obviously a very fast and technical song, but mm -hmm. still, we were trying for this song to also put some riffs in, which are maybe not 
slow, but they have like a moshing pace in yeah. between. So it's not it's it's not really it doesn't make sense for me to to create a song which has only the technical aspect and nothing else. Because when you play this song live, everyone's just looking at you and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. We, yeah. we, want a, we want a show with energy. You know, we want to see people move, have have fun. They, they I don't want to, to stand to there with, with their books and uh, their, uh, you know, glasses and watch and uh, write all the notes down. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I would like to add something. If uh, you consider the Chernobylus song as a starting point, it's it's cool to, to have this kind of atmosphere in the music because I would consider myself not as that typical uh, musician because I can't read notes. So I, I like to have some some space to to act, to entertain. Mm -hmm. And that's now it's, 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 it's really cool to have these songs, to have a slower, slower part where I can just um, loose and, and, and spread some vibes about the theme. Mm -hmm. and, and that's also a pity that we can't not play the songs live at the moment, but let's keep the fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, or I hope that they can continue this way because I really like to, to have the songs that way. Sure, That's absolutely. Sure. I would also like to add that it's also about performance that we want to show to the audience. So we want to show that we enjoy our music and for all the super technical stuff, it's it's also sometimes boring to watch because you only have to focus on your guitar and drums and whatever. Um, we want to have this mixture of being technical, but also like headbang on stage and mosh on stage. So this is also important mm. to have to have room for a certain entertainment. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I completely get that standpoint because you, you do get a lot of technical bands where it's like like almost obsessive to the right like, level that they go with, and you're like, there's like almost no break. Whereas like we use like I can see it always being a fun gig. Like I really want that my top gigs I like to see you uh, perform because I think it'd be, every single clip I've seen has been so energetic and so like insane um, to the point where I, I really, I really hope I can see you uh, perform soon. Yeah, likewise. Nice. Yeah. I gotta say, uh -huh. uh, the the gas masks. Does it ever get uncomfortable to wear them on stage? Like, because obviously when you go to a venue, it's uh, nope. like heated and sweaty. Nope. Nope. No. 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 Nope. <laughs> uh, honestly, honestly, in the beginning we tried to um, to cut to cut out the, the the section of the mouth for me as a vocalist, and I, I was looking like Ray Mysterio Jr. And it, that was that was actually there was no way to perform the songs. And also transport some seriousness with the music while looking like this. So <laughs> we, we decided to put it on, on just like on the intro or before we start the songs. And we always try to pick one song and to play them, or the guys try to play them with the gas mask, but it's, it's tough, I think. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it's, I have the easy job. I just have it on the face and that's it. So. <laughs> you can't hear anything. It smells so bad. Like you can't see anything. It's it's just doesn't make any sense. But hey, <laughs> <laughs> it looks so awesome. That, though. That's uh, what you, what the girlfriend has to deal with. So ah, oh, there comes the rubber man back at home. So <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> that's also something they have to agree it, with. So it stays <laughs> in your hair for some days and you can wash your hair over and over again the smell will stay one thing i, I kind of want to ask you is like, what kind of got you all into heavier music what was that like, a starting point for you all I, I have <laughs> uh, i have to blame my dad because he was uh, getting me in in contact with like Judas Priest and ZZ Top, mm. still one of my face uh, until today. And I think the turning point for me was actually aborted and Beneath the Massacre because it was the first time for me I, I listened to music that brutal. Mm. Uh, I think that was that was the reason why I fell in love with brutal death metal and technical death metal music. Mm. That's that's my point. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it's, it's the same for me. You know, my parents always try or listen to uh, like hard rock and 
Uh, Beneath the massacre. Yeah. <laughs> and like every time we were driven, driving with our car, we never listened to the radio. We always listened to cassettes or CDs. Mm. Like, that's how I grew up. And I was always uh, listening to like guitar music. Mm. That's why there was no other option for me than to learn this instrument. Yeah. <clears throat> My father was a guitarist as well. So it, it was obvious that it will turn into rock. Or hard rock music. Mm-hmm. I've always been, I've always been sort of jealous of people who've had like their parents into like like heavier music or like rock music and stuff. Because my parents are not really into that. So I, 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 sometimes it's like my parents will be able, I'm like like listening to them, be like, what what's that? And they'll like ask me all sorts of questions. I've always been really jealous of people who have had like that kind of experience with their parents. So it's like a share of like music sort of thing um yeah one thing as well like i kind of want to know what's your what's your favorite tour and why like what was your favorite tour and why i bought it mm. understandable <laughs> understandable completely sure yeah i think the aborted tour was pretty sick for us yeah and yeah the whole package was good like cryptopsy and benighted it in principle, like we were hanging out with friends for nearly one month and we had good venues, good crowd. It was always filled. And even um, we as starting band, we had so many people who already turned out early. Yeah. Yes, I, I guess you, all you guys remember the show in Denmark. Yeah, yes. right. It was everyone. Um, house or something like this. Mm-hmm. This was, we were, we were about the, the first band. We started the show and it's well, it was already like totally filled. Yeah. Copenhagen. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. I remember it was like 20 minutes before the show. The the venue was almost empty. And right in the beginning of the show, the, the, the whole room was packed. And um, I agree that this tour, it was, uh, it was, for me, it felt like perfect because to be on the road with, with, with friends and professional music musicians at the same time uh that was many who do you years. mean <laughs> uh, only friends only friends <laughs> and uh there were many dates packed houses like jason said and um it's still stuck in our mind and heart until today so um yeah that's that was my also my favorite one mm. our bus driver was the best musician in the bus what <laughs> <laughs> to Bama. <laughs> I gotta say, like, I love the video on your Instagram when you're all playing on the trampoline on stage. On stage, can, you, can that be a can that be a reoccurring set piece for Cytotoxin? The trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's very big. Yeah. How did that come about? And unfortunately, there's um there's no space anymore for any sport equipment on stage because we have too many barrels barrels on stage. <laughs> Usually, usually, I think we were doing some sports right before the show, but we were stuck in traffic, I remember. Mm-hmm. And so we decided to do some sports on stage. And there were, some, I think, 20 trampolines behind yeah. the stage. Yeah. So it was like a sudden idea to do this. And yeah, somehow it, it, it went viral, viral and uh, <laughs> people liked it. <laughs> it was I, remember, awesome, to be fair. I, I remember Jason tried to, tried to uh, play the solo while jumping on the trampoline. And not a good <laughs> idea. Would not recommend. What, what's the best idea of your whole life? Something <laughs> <laughs> I could never forget. Yeah. So, so we never forget this as the same way we did. don't forget Thunderbolt. So it's, it fit pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Great to remember. Super awesome. Really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I remember there was maybe a, it just well, just a few complainings about this, like, hey, you got channelable as a serious topic, why are you yeah, acting right. like? <laughs> but uh, I've, in my in my point of view, emotion is is the link. So if you can mm-hmm. reach reach the people, uh, you reach the heart of the people, you uh, can transport your message. So mm-hmm. that was a very a very cool a, a cool way to interact, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, to 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 get the, the audience ready for this and. Like Jason said, it's really important for us to 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 let the people see that we enjoy the music that we play. Um, oh, yeah, exactly. Even if it's a trampoline, why not? <laughs> yeah, 
I, I like, think the, the, the topic itself is super serious, of course, but um, we are using humor as a transportation link, <laughs> I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think, and that's that's fair. Like it's also a way of using humor to connect with people and to get the message out there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's fair to do this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like you got to have fun on stage, you know, even loads of metal bands sing about really serious topics, but if they all just stood there just looking really serious while they play throughout the entire thing, which I have seen bands that do that, but the bands that can have fun with it as well and entertain the crowd, they definitely have some of my more favourable performances. Uh, right. Mm. Right. Of course, it's, it's fun. It's a trampoline, isn't it? Who can't have fun on the trampoline? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the people spend time, money, and they drive uh, a way to, to see you performing. And so that's like, like, like a duty to entertain and mm. to, to, to transport it and to, to just to have a good time. And it's maybe, it's maybe right after the show when you're getting in contact and you're having a chat and then you can talk about the whole topic and theme. But um, it's, it's, it's very cool to have a good time, to just, yeah. just enjoy the music and to let the energy flow. To create some sort of plutonium, and um, yeah, that's what counts. That's what's what stays in your in your in your memory. Like you you're linking what you what you uh, explored with your emotion, and right. that's really yeah. important. Well, and yeah, so yeah. It, it, it helps even to even in such a strange time we have right now to remember. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, so that was like it was a, a serious decision of 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 uh, the whole band to release the album. Even if you're aware that you cannot play the song live, but it's like, hey, we have this album, so let's do something for the supporters and mm. not hold it back. <laughs> so that's all uh, yeah. important. Mm. Yeah, well, it, I, I think it's it's important to like kind of give people like motivation especially during now like that, that album like it was you know when it dropped i can personally say for me it, like boosted me boosted my morale, morale a little bit because i was like i've got so much to actually listen to and it, it kind of it cheered me up like i mean i was like i've got a new album to get through and like it was it was a great album like i think that's that's the most important thing is as well like, really? and, mm. yeah i think uh it's our worst album because there are too many pixel videos on it <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's also a topic. I, uh, <laughs> that maybe the, you got the question: where, where are the pig squeals? <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we tried to play some, but um, like also Jason said, it's it's the tone and the, the seriousness we want to continue with. Mm. So it, it felt like there is it's actually no place to set some pig squeals and. When we listen to the to the to the to the records in whole, um, I remember that I did not miss the, the squeals. So it's 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 a, it's a, a bit more mature, I would say. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So like um, so besides obviously the music, then um, what do you guys do like for hobbies outside mm -hmm. of cytotoxin? Like what are your interests? Like what have you been doing? I guess in the pandemic time to kind of keep yourself entertained. Hitting the gym with Cremo. <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell yeah. him how to do. I still exercise. got the muscle sore. I still have it. I still have it. Um, so yeah. You can lift more. Uh, Jason, Jason, Jason <laughs> told me some very good exercises, and I try my best to do it. Um, <laughs> during the pandemic uh, stuff, I'm I'm back into gaming a bit. I like to play some root games like um, Dead Cells or Hotline Miami, Sun Lucy. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's some time. Um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and I like to collect some, some paintings. Like what? Paintings like my birds. Um, have... show, the, show the band photo. Right. Oh, yeah. I have a band photo hanging in my room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think I, I have I have to reveal this because it's it's a secret one, because uh, <laughs> it's the most serious uh, picture of us 
because we are all were laughing at the same time. <laughs> it's losing control and all that is laughing. So that um yeah, it's really important to me. It shows that we are a good team and having fun. So do you Absolutely. Do? Awesome. Uh, yeah. And actually it's the it's it's the first picture where Stucky is laughing. So we have <laughs> first time in his life. This is our rare occasion. Yeah. yeah, so um I usually still play guitar, like that's something you can do at home. Yeah, that's super mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> um, otherwise I, I'm into climbing and latest um I'm doing some vocals also. <laughs> yeah, but most of the things are um revolved around music. So mm, like yeah. concerts and yeah, everything music. <laughs> yeah, same for me. I guess uh, Jason and I, we are doing, we are having students and we are doing online lessons for them. So right. that's mm. a pretty much a time filler. And other than that, I'm just playing for myself, maybe recording some new ideas, ideas for the next album, stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. cool. Yeah, I might actually, I might actually see if I can book into some of your lessons. I tried learning uh, guitar over lockdown over here, and I'm, I'm doing awful. Oh, <laughs> if I'm honest, but take some lessons. Best time. Take some lessons. No, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, go, go, um, go. Um, go. <laughs> well, I remember, um, like on on one of the other interviews I had, I was I was talking about. So like, I was trying to learn scales for like, ages and. I, I just learned like one scale and then I forgot about it for mums and then came back. I was like, I cannot remember. I could not remember a single scale. I also it's, tried it this is, the beginning. Let me show you the, the most. <laughs> Let's go for some. <laughs> let me show you the, the most important scale. Okay. So that's a pentatonic scale, the most important. Campfire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is great. It's like it's like getting a free cytotoxin concert. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first lesson, so let's go. <laughs> That's like the trial period, and then you can pay for premium next. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not possible to play live together uh, on the internet because of mm. the latency. It would be amazing if it's possible. Yeah. I know, yeah, I, I think if, if the internet speeds like were a lot a lot quicker, it'd be still that back and forth on like, yeah, light, like speed. light speed, obviously. <laughs> well there's um there's a there's a venue, um it's called Boom. Um they they're currently doing live streams where uh mm -hmm. bands kind of come in pre record and it's released as a live stream, which is it's really interesting what they're doing. Um because like, I've I've seen quite a few and the productions like bang on with it. Yeah, we also definitely are definitely up for doing a, a live stream. We have uh, thought about this, like recording ourselves in our rehearsal room with several mm -hmm. cameras and all this stuff. It's just a lot of work to do before, but maybe it's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was really interesting to see. Um, what one thing I kind of want to ask you is as well, like, what would your dream tour look like, like in the future? Like, what, like, obviously after COVID, what would the tour that you'd like, ideally be like? Okay, this is who I've dreamed of getting on the tour, and this is who I want to tour with in the future. You can bring Toto if you want. Necrophagist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say um, Dragon Force. Yeah, oh, Dragon Force. You know, yeah. that's actually and, a really good And I know Fonzo's answer Baby Metal. Baby yes. Metal? No way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd see that. The Dragon Force, I would totally enjoy it, man. They're, uh, I love their music. They're like, you listen to two seconds of the of the of their songs, and you have already uh, like the perfect, uh, you know, you feel totally happy. That's, yeah, that's yeah it, they're definitely upbeat. They're definitely Valley, upbeat. Valley of, Valley of the Damned is still one of my favorites, actually. It's, it's, I'm still enjoying that record. What, what do you guys do? Meshuga. What about Meshuga? Oh, Meshuga. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be really, that would be amazing to that. I have to ask, um, if Baby Matt asked you to do a song with them, would you do it? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such an awesome, an awesome remix. 
I think I would enjoy to be on the road with uh, Shadow of Intent. Mm. Okay. Oh. Um, I think the vocal span, it's uh, he's he's just a badass. And I remember I just saw the the live uh, footage from the Grave Singer song, and I think that they're also beasts on stage. So it would be really cool to to have them uh, on, on 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 the tour on the road. So and also beneath the massacre, like and, and it's like we 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 play all the the same uh, band names, but. I remember that Fonzo and I, we went to a show of Benito Massacre and we just went crazy in front of the, of the, of the stage. And just, it was the first time I saw Fonzo fighting. <laughs> 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 uh, he's so full of peace, actually, but um, that moment we just get rid of and just lose our control. <laughs> <laughs> just would be great to have this every day, every night. Mm. So, yeah. Long ago, but this was a great package. It was Dying Fetus, Benito Massacre, and... Origin. 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 Yeah. That's like a good song. Yeah. Mm. So what's like your what's your funniest gig story? Like obviously you guys have been going for a while now. Like what's the funniest thing for you guys to happen on tour? If anything sticks out to you. There must be plenty of them. Primo. The lady fights. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have to explain this. I think you should explain it. Yeah, because you're the king. Yes. <laughs> yes. Unconquered king. That was the, my, the, the night I conquered the crown. Um, that was a habit. It was the, the, mer the merchandise of Gary Chi from aboard it. He mm. was telling me that he is, he is the king in lady fight. And I was gaining some interest. And he told me that it's like a habit. You, you just dress out, you just be naked, and you just, um, it's not easy to explain. Um, you just force your genitals between your legs, you keep it there, and you try to open the legs of your opponent. And <laughs> you accomplish that, you, you, win, you win the battle. And he just trying to, to make a fight against me. And I remember that, that he just um, won against uh, Stefano from aboard it. And we did this in the tour bus between all the tables. <laughs> and all, all, the guy, all the guys sitting there. I remember Flo, Flo Manier from Cryptopsy, the drummer. He was really, really serious. And he, somehow he could not handle the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I came so close to him, and there was no way to flee. And yeah, that was the night I just won because I know all the techniques and all my training. <laughs> I know I have to, to get him exhausted. I just have to survive the first two minutes and then that will be my time. And then I just uh, won the crown. And I remember all the people were laughing so, so, so much. And even our bus driver <laughs> came in, into the section of the bus and he just saw us naked. Uh, <laughs> it was a really cool story. And since then, I am the king of Lady Fight. So, um, <laughs> Congratulations, I, I, man. Thank you. Thank you. It was it's an honor for me, and there are no opponents in sight. So that's, um, yeah. that's Still it. the we king. Should get, um, we should get an award, mate, and we are king of lady fights. So we'll send it to I you. Did it without being drunk. <laughs> and the Who guys, knows? Who knows? Guys can agree. I never, you can confirm, I never drink. Never. Krimo is one of the few persons who uh, can be naked with, without drinking. Yes. Mm. That's impressive. I, I, I can't even be na naked like with, with drinking. I, 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 I can't. I'm like, I don't even want to see it. I'm going to keep it covered. I'm going to keep it covered. <laughs> I also remember when we were on tour and we were listening to Extermination Dismemberment, we uh, being naked as well and doing some rolls in the bus, like rolling over the tables and between the seats. Mm. And we did this on, on, the, on the first two tours, I remember, and on the tour it awarded, uh, we did this again because it's like a habit, like a tradition, and all the people that mm. just, uh, yeah, what is the guy doing here? He's just rolling over the tables. And I remember Chris Donaldson from Crypto C, who mm. just did not get the idea. Just for lucky, what are these guys doing? <laughs> and they just just went on with their conversations. <laughs> <laughs> did our stuff. We just did our job. So yeah, that's also something. <laughs> Sorry. To listen Sounds to like a bunny talk. Yeah. 
So that's like, um, I do not know what's, what will happen when we are in, in the bus with extermination, this member oh. on the, on the oh next tour, and then we switch on their music and then rolling naked over the tables. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be see, only serious things happen during the tour. <laughs> I mean, you guys certainly sound like you have fun on tour, which is the most important thing. Mm. And 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 even I mean I have to say there there's footage of this stuff like all the roles on on tape on the, in the internet and also the lady fight in the internet. Yeah, um, you can check it out on our YouTube channel. So everything <laughs> is down there for would not, eternity. If it would not be <laughs> in the internet, we wouldn't tell you about this because what is happening in the bus stays in the bus. But mm. um, <laughs> the secret is revealed, so we got no chance to hide it. <laughs> That's for the cytotoxin only fans only. <laughs> like I said, we enjoyed it. We really enjoyed this. Mm. Awesome, definitely. It's really important to have fun on time and by the sounds of it. That top bus just sounds crazy. It sounds so fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, one thing as well, this is always like a really fun question. I um, it's guilty pleasures. We always kind of get it's like there's no such thing as guilty pleasures, but like, what is it that you listen to the most outside of metal? Like, what are the top like people that you listen to that artists in general? Can be literally anything. Um, for me, it is this alternative rock thing like Alter Bridge or Creed. So it, it's still kind of metal. Like, I really enjoy Nickelback, that's no joke. <laughs> I think they wrote some good tunes, mm. and sometimes when I feel in this mood, I, I listen to this kind of stuff. But I don't know. Um, bring me the horizon. Does this count? Like it's oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 kind of metal. <laughs> yeah, what, what's mad is um, I only got into them recently, and then I, I started. I, I listened to the most recent like EP slash album, and I was like, this is really good, and I went back and I listened. I, I think they're really, really interesting. The one yeah. right is very interesting. Like it's like oh. They're kind of doing stuff that fans are kind of catching up to, Clay yeah. and then already kind of jumped onto the next thing. Yeah. Um, I have to say, um, uh, I also like to listen to Five Finger Death Punch, even if they got a shitty reputation, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I think they have quite a good songs. Mm -hmm. And also, I like to listen to sometimes more melodic, hardcore, like The Ghost Inside. Like when I'm in the gym and I'm doing some training. I also like to listen to some hip hop stuff of synth wave, like uh, ritual rave, all the old school stuff. And mm. that's also like I like to enjoy to 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 chill, to preparing my meals, to cook something. And that's something that gives me really, really chills. Right. And, uh, that's something that I really enjoy. Mm. Fonzo, now you. How it yeah. goes. Take the middle. Can't really uh, add, yeah, of course. <laughs> Can't really add that much, but other than that, I'm yeah. As I told you, I'm a big fan of Toto. I also listen a lot to Richie Cotson. Don't know if any one of you knows this guy. He played a uh, guitar in Mr. Big. Mm. Okay, it sounds familiar. I, I can't remember if I've listened to him though. Um, it sounds familiar though. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like adult-oriented rock. That's that's kind of my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy rock. <laughs> Daddy rock. <laughs> Big sugar rocky. <laughs> yes. So, what would you say um, has been like the biggest challenge you've faced as a band since the band started, and how did you overcome it? Um... For me, that's there's there's one one thing. I think I think it was the the sickness or sickness or disease, Alfonso, uh, mm. like his uh, focal dystonia he had, mm. and he still is still not over with hundred percent. But we can work with this. But I remember the show as we were on stage without him and mm. just playing the guitar, and we tried to make our best, but it was not like the same. We were starting the project, so I was. Mm. I was just missing my best friend, and I'm still, I'm still really grateful we went through this time, and um, we are back like a five piece now. Mm. It, it's tough because he is the founding member of the band, and we went over all the years together. And but um, I think that's something like a strength of the band that we fight through this, and we found a way to keep us keep us alive. 
Mm. And for yeah. me, that was, that was maybe the, the, the toughest challenge we had to take, in my opinion. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> we, also had a, we also had some member changes back in 2014 or 15, I don't know. I really remember. It was also kind of hard. So we it took like five years for Gamma Get On, which is pretty long for in record. And this was like a hard time. But yeah, we managed it and we are back. I can actually say that you you know, I had Focal Dystonia, which is like a neuro uh, neurological disorder. So I can't really play guitar anymore, but it's gone for now. So I can say that I'm like 100% healed and I'm really happy about that. And I couldn't have done it with my bandmates and with my without my girlfriend. So I'm really yeah. thankful and yeah, I'm back on full force again. That's great, Sam. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing. I remember that he, he was uh, keeping us updated about all the progress, like he was starting from the beginning. And he, and I remember he was really into the progress and into this, this uh, disease, how it works, and maybe how his body can maybe deal with this. Mm. And yeah, mm. we are happy to have Yeah, it's, it's extremely good that he's, he's back. Like, yeah. good, it's good that he's made a recovery. Yeah. And you guys definitely are on full force now, so that was great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like all the stuff that's come out recently has just been incredible. Like uh, everything you've made has been incredible. So I'm really grateful that, that you all kind of. Um, why is it the. So like, what's the biggest influence for cytotoxin as a whole? Um, oh, I already asked that. Sorry, sorry. I got a bit busted. Um, <laughs> what. Um, what would you say is the best tar food? Best tar food. Sorry, I, I read the long, wrong question. Uh, what would you say is the best tar food that you've had or tar? And the worst tar food as well. Uh, I remember. There was, there was a many. <laughs> yeah. One show in Rotterdam, we had like vegan food, self cooked. Mm. It was pretty good. The uh, venue was called Baruch or Baroque. Yeah, or... Mm. yeah. yeah and it's true. That's true. It was true. It was, it and, was and the true. worst. The first one oh. was in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> we got the same. We got the same thoughts. Yes. Uh, for me, it mm. was also the best food was in in the Baruch, in um, in Rotterdam. It was some kind of vegan Chinese food. Mm. Okay. I remember I had six or seven plates. I was uh, almost unable to perform. <laughs> I, I I just wish to sit and to sing. Um, but the worst food, I also, I think I have to agree to Fonzo, it was, I have to say, in Germany. It was, it's, it's quite a shame because on the tour we had really good food and then we, we had a show in Germany and it was so, so cool. I remember there was like three, three uh, boxes and there were just a box full of meat. The other one was like sour cream potatoes. And mm -hmm. the first was just pale rice or something like this. And there were maybe 25 men and 10 of them were vegan. So it's mm. like, um, hey, that's no food. But yeah, I do not remember how we managed the situation. I think we just went to a shop and buy it some by our own. Yeah. Like it's like, it's like, um, it's like now we, we try to, to, pre to prepare ourselves and to have something in our in our um, backpacks just to mm. be yeah. safe to have something that yeah. something have, fast you never know you never know if there's uh, something can happen so. I, it's I, fun you know, that we have the same the same menus in mind yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't think i've ever got food poison in my entire life like we've touched wood um i don't think i've ever had food poison in my entire life I feel like it's going to happen eventually, though. Like, you have been yeah, you've been on a good streak for too long. Yeah, no, I, I, I've rode, I've rode the wave a bit too, like, for too long. I feel like it's going to catch up on me. <laughs> oh yeah, so um, if you ever got the opportunity to play at Chernobyl, would you? Um, I think uh, we would scare the wild animals away. Probably. <laughs> and it's, Probably. It's, um, it's uh, their place, and um, I remember there was there was a, a show or festival series called uh, the Kiev 
Sonic Massacre. Um, I think there were three or four editions of it. And that's maybe the closest one, closest mm -hmm. location I could, um, yeah, I could imagine to perform, but it, it stopped. So I don't know if, if that would be uh, a good idea to, to perform mm. in Chicago itself. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I mean, think it, it's, it's way more cliche. And mm -hmm. to do, but um, but we, we just were thinking about to, to make a to travel over there to, to visit the location and to, to visit the spot. Maybe that's something we want to do. Yeah, yeah. Someday. Mm. Imagine there'd be like a lot of um, health and safety forms to fill out if you wanted to go and perform. Yes. Wait, it's funny you mentioned that, but I actually watched like a documentary about people who go to weird places for like, holidays. And it turns out to go on a tour around Toronto, there's no paperwork you got for them to fill out. Like, really? I, I, yeah, I looked at it and like, there's nothing they didn't fill out a single form once. They <laughs> just got in a van and they drove them to Toronto. Did not know that. Yeah, it was, it, oh, it's interesting. Watch uh, Dark Tourism on, on Netflix. It's very, very interesting. But oh. I, I think I think the the interest got boosted by the uh, Chernobyl series from sure. HBO, and mm. somehow uh, some people were get, getting attraction and flew over and just making some selfies right uh, before in before the reactor. I don't mm. know if it's the right way to to to, to, to deal with this topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But somehow this the series boosted the the interest on mm. Chernobyl. But which is, is something good, actually. Yeah, um, it was a great serve, to be fair. I think it really captured the event quite well. Yeah. yeah. Some people just did not get the point. Uh, it's not about just being there. It's like stepping back and keeping in mind. So, yeah. Yeah. Because mm. it is a crazy event in like human history. I like, well, probably one of the most crazy. Like, you, know, you, you can see the entire city was just fully evacuated within like a matter of a day, like a day and it's frozen in time it's just such an, an eerie place when you like see even when photos you get like a weird feeling um so yeah um i think we'll get into we've got a few questions um so one sort of end point we always have to end on is if you could go back in time, give some advice to your younger self, as well as give advice to fans just starting out, what would they be? Sorry, I, I couldn't understand it fully. Yeah, yeah. actually your connection is really bad. You sound like, uh, like a small robot from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, let me just see if I can say, sorry, am I, am I all right now? No, I'll tell you what, Nathan, I'll ask the question for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, like, what advice would you give to your younger selves when you were just starting out? And then what advice, you know, kind of the same advice would you give to a young band that does starting now? Go on doing what you're doing. I guess that's the best advice. Yeah, don't try to be some somebody else. Just, mm -hmm. just um, follow your heart and transport your passion. I think that's something that people always will realize and appreciate if they see that if you're just right behind what you're doing and with your yeah. whole heart and your whole soul, I think that's something that really counts. Mm. Yeah. Especially, especially in those days, we have a lot of bands, a lot of music, everything is um, available in the internet and everybody is downloading music stuff and streaming. So if you're on concert and you perform your music, just give 100%. Mm. Yeah, I would also say, uh, don't be too scared of all of these phenomenal players on the internet. Um, you don't need to be super awesome or technical to be a good musician. Like it's all about emotions and about creativity. And you don't need to know the fretboard. You can still write good music. And just, yeah, do what you like to do. Be, be passionate. Try to write good and emotional songs and that's what people want to hear. It's not about being the fastest sweeper or whatever. Just just be creative and do something unique. That's a really good point, to be fair. Yeah, because yeah, if you look at bands like Black Sabbath as well, like 
the biggest metal band of all time. Like Tony Iommi's riffs are pretty simple and basic, but they're so impactful. They're still class as some of the best riffs ever created. And, you know, they're pretty easy to play. So it just shows, you know, it's definitely more about, you know, the beauty behind the song as opposed to just creating, like you said, the most fastest technical riff ever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and Jason was speaking about this. You have some, you just try to search something for something unique that stands your band for. Like, it, it's the topic, Chernobyl, for us. It's like we're pulling our energy from, like, inspiration and ideas and... Um, that you just remember it always can be worse and people are still having problems over there and that's um, something that motivates ourselves to go on so just try to to have some something that maybe motivates you even in, in tough times Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, try to make a good impact on people or society like try to be positive and spread something where people can think about it and which jump makes life trampoline. better jump on the trampoline absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah. Last jump on the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> nice. but uh, thank you very much guys it's been really a pleasure to sit down with you guys and have a chat mm -hmm. um please come to the uk as soon as you can the north of england yeah, we, will. So we will be there yeah. the, the minute that all gets announced i'm buying tickets <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, we miss the UK and um, thank you for your time and your interest and keep it up, keep the support up and you know, all the best to you guys. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. You too, guys. Yeah. It's, it's been absolutely great. Like It's like I was saying um, earlier, like when we first started the podcast in a weird way, like uh, the idea kind of came from like kind of watching um, Fox and Hobson and seeing you guys. That's like how I oh. found you guys was through Fox and Hobson and nice. it, in a weird way that you, you also influenced the podcast because that was like the first like sort of like experience where we saw oh you can do a podcast and talk about my own get bands that you really enjoy on that's why it's such a great moment to get you on here because me and Matt have been fans of you for quite a while now and everything that you've done we've done deep dives into you know, we've like listened to like a lot of your albums and then we've listened to a new one and it's been like the real to sort of get you all on yeah, it's really cool. Cool to hear this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Yeah, thank you very much. Catch you guys later. See you guys. See ya. Okay. Never forget.